Hello friends, my name is Daniel Fontenot and uh, this is Jewels of Truth. I decided to, beyond the long studies that I have been doing for two and a half years now, beyond those studies to present some short videos addressing some of the errors that have been broadcast out there in, on the internet. Uh, part of the reason why I have decided to do this, there are many reasons, but one of them that kind of triggered me to start doing this because I recently saw uh, a few videos out there. I didn't watch them all, but there, there are people that are saying, you know, I left the Adventist, I left the Seventh-day Adventist Church, or I was a Seventh-day Adventist and I became a Catholic, and I want to respond to that, but. I'm not going to just respond to that. I'm going to go far beyond that in future presentations. These are going to be sh a quite a bit shorter presentations than what I normally do. They're going to be in, in addition to what I'm already doing. I'm not going to stop the long studies. But it needs to be told out there that there are some people who were once Catholic and become Seventh-day Adventists. And I am one of those people. And I'm going to tell you why in a nutshell, I became a set, why I left the Catholic Church 42 years ago and I became a Seventh-day Adventist. Even as a young Catholic, I don't remember why or how this ever came about, but even as a young Catholic, I always, always believed that the Bible is the Word of God. It is the unerring word, word of God. It is, it is the infallible word of God. The word of the living God. So, when I was confronted at the age of 24 with the teachings of Seventh-day Adventism, I recognized that the teachings of Catholicism were not in accordance to Scripture. They were, in fact, deadly heresy, and that the doctrines held by Seventh-day Adventists were according to Scripture. We look at Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. Isaiah 8 and verse 20 has been my go-to for many, many years. This scripture made a, an indelible impression upon me years ago when I first read it. Isaiah 8 and verse 20. To the law and to the testimony, the law of God, the testimony of scripture, to the law and to the testimony, if they, anyone, speak not according to this word, the Bible, it is because there is no light in them. When, and when there is no light, there is darkness. Okay? So that is the reason I left, that is the core reason why I left the Catholic Church and became a Seventh-day Adventist. So I rejected the teaching that Sunday is a holy day, the Sabbath of the Lord. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11, that the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. The Bible, uh, it, it is the Lord's day, not the first day of the week, Sunday, but the seventh day, which is known as Saturday. I learned that the papacy intentionally thought to change the law of God. And you can't change the law of God. You can try all you want. You might change it in the minds of people. You may deceive the people, but you cannot change the law of God. It is written in heaven. Even history tells us that the papacy thought to change times and laws. The Catholic Church admits to that. They are proud of that fact. They believe that they had a mandate from God to do that. Daniel 7.25 tells us, the book of Daniel, chapter 7, 
and verse 25 tells us, And he, represented by the little horn of Daniel chapter 7, he shall speak great words against the Most High. That's what the papacy has done. It has spoken great words against the Most High. The Pope, the Pope claims to be God on earth, and we will prove that in a later presentation. So, he, sh he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. The papacy persecuted the true church for 1260 years. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and a dividing of time. Now, they not only thought to change the law of God, but they persecuted the church for worshiping God according to the dictates of their own consciences. Men and women and children in those days, in the Dark Ages, could not worship God according to the dictates of their own consciences. The papacy has proved time and time again that it hates liberty of conscience. The papacy does not believe in the, in the liberty of conscience except as it suits their purposes of global dominance. When I left the Catholic Church 42 years ago, I rejected the teaching that the Pope is the head of the Christian Church and that Peter was the first Pope. I do not believe that when a person dies, he or she goes directly to heaven or hell, but lies in the grave until the resurrection. But if Peter knew that the Catholic Church believed that he was the first Pope, he would be horrified. Matthew 16, verse 18, does not teach that Peter was appointed the head of the Church, no matter what the theologians of the Catholic Church may claim. The word Peter signifies a stone, a rolling stone. You're not going to roll a big, huge boulder, okay, which is Christ. Peter was not the rock upon which the church was founded. The gates of hell did prevail against him when he denied his Lord with cursing and swearing. The church was built upon one against whom the gates of hell could not prevail, that is Christ. Centuries before the Savior's advent, Moses had pointed to the rock of Israel's salvation. The psalmist had sung of the rock of my strength. Isaiah had written, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Peter himself, writing by inspiration, applies this prophecy to Jesus. He says, If ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious unto whom, unto whom coming a living stone, rejected indeed of men, but with God elect precious, ye also as living stones are built up a spiritual house. 1 Peter 2, verses 3 through 5. Other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 11. Upon this rock, said Jesus, I will build my church. In the presence of God and all the heavenly intelligences, in the presence of the unseen army of hell, Christ founded his church upon the living rock. That rock is himself, his own body, for us, broken and bruised. Against the church built upon this foundation, the gates of hell shall not prevail. This idea that the Pope is the head of the churches is just an effort to lord over the churches. There will always be persons that love to rule over others and those who love to be ruled because they do not want to be held responsible for their actions. The prophets prophesy falsely, Jeremiah 5 verse 31 tells us. 
and the priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? If you rely upon these popes and these priests, etc., to rule over you, to be conscience for you, what will you do in the judgment? You will not be able to say, well, the priest told me this, or the pastor told me this, or the pope said this. No, we are accountable, each one of ourselves, to God alone. And Isaiah 2, verse 22 says, Cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils. Who gave us breath, brothers and sisters? Who gave us breath? For wherein is he, is he to be accounted of? Each one of us human beings are accounted, are accountable to God. Cease ye from man. Stop depending upon the arm of flesh. I want nothing to do with a church or organization that fights against God. The God of heaven is calling upon all the people of the fallen churches to come out of them and be separate from them. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, Babylon, is the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth, have committed fornication with her. Yes, the, the, the political leaders of the earth have committed fornication, spiritual fornication with the papacy, with Babylon. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered his, her iniquities. Revelation 18, verses 1 through 5. Dear people, either we believe the infallible word of God, or we believe the word of a sinful human being. God created each one of us. The Pope did not create us. Jesus, who is the Son of God, gave his life to redeem us, to save us from our sins. He gave his life. The Pope did none of these things. He did not create us, and neither did he give his Son or himself to die for us. Jesus Christ is my Savior, not the Pope of Rome.